my guys, Angie Bell with my fairy treasures. Okay, you guys, I want to share how I make my little uh, magical worlds, my little fairy worlds with collage and paint. So it's just very, very mixed media. Um, I have it turned to the side right now because I just want you to kind of see fully what I'm t working with. I'm going to explain what we're working with and then we'll get started. Just a second, let me make sure what you guys are seeing. Okay, so you guys can see everything. There we go. This is kind of big. It's on a, this is on 11 by 14 piece of poster board. So um, it's kind of big. It's kind of hard to fit everything in. So that's why I have it going this way. But we're going to turn it up this way here in just a second. But what I just wanted to explain what I did. I took, I went through my magazine bits and um, I put this all together. <clears throat> this is a sky here. Um, from a calendar. I love the color of the sky. We're going to, the words here I don't want, so we're going to paint over those words. And I'm going to show you how to create a sky. Even though the sky is already created, we're going to make it look like over here, over here. Okay? Um, because I want those words gone. Sometimes I only have a little bit of the sky and then I paint the rest in. You can do that too. So like you, you only have, like you take a, a sky out of a magazine and you only have enough for just the middle. So you have white here and you have white there. You can combine your colors that look like what's in the middle and make a sky. So I'm going to show you that. But in this case, I have it to go all the way across. I just have all these words here. So we need to get rid of those. And we want this side to look, not exactly of course, but similar to that side. Okay. This right here is some mountains that I cut out in the background. This is a cake. This can be turned to a waterfall. Here's another cake turned to a waterfall. I found these cakes at um, in a book from Dollar Tree, all about cakes. I picked up both of them. My song, because I'm like, oh, I'll use that in my artwork. Because I love making waterfalls out of cakes. Um, this is a um, building back here, um, a really beautiful like castle. There'll be snow and water dripping all over that. This is, I think, some jewelry bracelets or something. This will be turned into a waterfall. This here. It's going to be turned into like it's a world within a world. This is a perfume bottle turned upside down. And this I'll create and put little people in here. Well, um, maybe people, this one might be a bridge. Okay, so you guys get the point. Now down here at the bottom, I'm, I want the water to reflect into the water down here. So we have water. I put water in. And I like to get my water or my skies from magazines because they're really nice and big. You can really work with them. So it's all pasted down, but the colors that are in the sky need to be down here because I like that reflection from the sky into the water. So I will put the same colors down here, okay, in the water. Okay, so I wanted to explain kind of everything I've done so far. Oh, and then I'm turning it the right way up. And then this is a watch up here because I just think that's magical. Um, I pasted everything down. I used a matte gel or a matte medium. You don't have to use matte medium if you don't have it. You can take Elmer's glue and um, and I take a white flat spray paint in Elmer's glue, like a cup of Elmer's glue, about 10 squirts of a white flat spray paint. And it makes it more of a flat paint so that it, because when the paint is flat and not shiny, then you can use paint on top of that. Okay. You want it to be a paintable surface. Also, what I would do if I used the glue and made my own homemade matte medium, I'd also then, even though I did that, I would take the matte spray paint and matte spray paint over the top of this. And then that really, really make sure that it's a matte surface and you can paint on top of it. But it needs to be a clear matte spray paint. Okay, so I've given you what I've done so far and alternatives. The next thing we do is we need to pick our colors for the sky and for the water. So I just looked in the sky that, that that's here. Let me make sure that my camera settings are right. Yeah, plenty. So I looked at the colors that are in the sky here and I went through my cheap acrylic paint. I mean, I'm talking the cheap stuff. Uh, Apple Barrel, the pink, this pinky magenta color. Um, Craft Smart, this is this is uh, Michael's Apple Barrel, this is Walmart, 50 cents. Okay, you guys get the point. I'm going to use this color here, 50 cent Walmart, Craft Smart, this is blue. These can be 3 or 4 $4 from Michael's Craft Smart. 
this one's a little bit more expensive. It's deco art. They're not the cheapest paints, but they've got some cool colors. So sometimes I spend a little bit more money on my acrylic paints. When I say I spend a little more, I spend like a dollar, dollar fifty at the most two bucks, but not normally. Okay, so all that is on this on this thing. So I can take all those paints and put those aside now. And get them out of the way and my matte medium. So let's get started. Let me see if I can bring this over and still be in frame. No, I can't bring it bring it right here. Okay, hopefully I'm not working too far, but you guys, it's a big piece, so I need to, you know, be at the right angle for this. Okay, so um, I have long nails, and when I do this work, I don't always have long nails, so I may have to use a paintbrush to apply, and then I'll use my finger, so we'll see. I, in fact, I think that's how I'm going to start off. Let me grab a paper towel. Do I have any paper towels in here? Oh my goodness, did I run out of paper towels? All right, let me see if I can, let me see if I can find a paper towel, if I can scrunch one up out of my trash can here. <laughs> my trash can of crap. Yeah, I found a paper towel. Okay. I didn't realize I ran out of paper towels. Okay, so let's get started. We want to make, on this sky, we want it to look like this over here um, and get rid of all these words because nobody wants that. So, a lot of times I don't, if I, might, if I don't have long nails, I don't even use a brush. I just use my fingers, but I'm going to use my fingers anyway. So, let's take this, and I actually need a darker blue than this. You know, I have a darker blue. Just a second. Let's, let's take this off. I have a baby wipe, and we can just wipe this right off. Oh, and that's another thing. If you have a matte surface like it, like this, it makes it so that if you don't like something, you can take a baby wipe and wipe it right off. Isn't that cool? Love that. All right, just a second. I gotta grab a darker blue. Been trying to get to it. I hope I don't have a crappy avalanche. All right, I'm gonna put you guys on pause because I gotta go grab this blue color. So I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Sometimes you don't know about things until you get started and then you're like oh well, that's not right so I had bought this for only this was regularly seven dollars because I got it for like a dollar fifty uh, uh, not this last Clarence at Hobby Lobby 75% off but the year before that this fine touch acrylic paint look at this big old thing of paint isn't that fabulous anyway let me get some out of here and get it out of my palette it's really really thick I mostly like flat acrylic paints. I don't know if this has a shine to it or not, but try to stick with just flat acrylic paints, not the shiny ones. This one might have a little bit of shine to it, but it's the color I need, so it's happening. All right, and I'm getting paint all over me. Just a second. It's all over my brush here. Just a second. I know I do art and I'm always trying to stay trying not to make get too messy well when you get too messy then you start getting paint all over what you're doing where you don't want it so that's why I try to stay in control of myself okay so again this blue color yeah it's a little darker but it's gonna work and I'm gonna, right now, I don't want it to be all even. I want it to look like a sky. So the way that we start making this look like a sky and not even is by using our fingers. I'm just gonna turn the page so I can get to the right angle. So this is how we start making a sky. And I'm also gonna go over that watch a little bit so that watch looks like it belongs there. Now, if a little bit of words appear to the sky, I think that'll look magical. But right now, it looks like print on the sky. So we don't want that. Um, next color I'm going to go to is... Um, it's gonna, I'm going to go to um, some purple. Let's go to this deeper purple. Because it's kind of what I see over there on the other side. 
And what this also does is it also teaches you how to do how to make skies. That's what else I like about this is it teaches you how to make a sky when you do this. So let me get my finger clear and cleaned off a little bit here. All right, again, I'm going to use my, oh, you already used my brush. Okay, so now let's take this and smear. You want to smear, smear it up into that blue so that everything blends in together. Blend a little over that, over that, uh, over that watch. Let's throw some more on here. At the same time, let's throw in some, um, this light color, the light lavender. Throw some of that in here. Okay. And we're gonna blend these up into each other. You don't want anything to look too even just, think, just remember you're trying to create a sky, right? And a sky is not even, right? Absolutely not. Skies melt and blend into each other and all of that. So I just look for another brush that I can use for application purposes. Here we go. Um, next, let's go with some pink or magenta right into here there's already some pink right there I'm just gonna define it more okay. and make sure you blend that up into the other colors that you have going on and then just start looking at things and saying okay what else do I feel like I need like right here I feel like I need a little more blue and through here so I'm just adding a little bit more in through here look how beautiful that is okay and then blend that all the way over into the other one I think that's gorgeous. Um, okay, I see a little bit of white right there. I need to do something about that. So we already have some pink there. Let's throw some more of this in through there. Let's throw in a little blue because there's a little blue down in through here. And let's just try meshing those two together and see what we get. I'm sure once we mesh those two together, we'll start getting a little bit of uh, some type of purple, some type of cool purple. Fabulous. Love it. So there we go. So now, Let me just put a little bit more blue in here because I want to make sure that I have enough that goes into the mountains there. There we go. And I like that. That looks good. So when you do this, you're never looking for like perfection. There's no such thing. Um, you're playing, you're having fun. You're trying to make it look like a sky, right? Um, so there's no right or wrong. Um, I think I want a little bit more blending. Oh, shoot, that's a wrong color. Uh, let's wipe that off. Where's the purple? Oh, this was the purple one. Okay. Um, what is the deal? All right, let me 
rinse this brush because I think I got too much of some other color on here and it's mixing up. I think that's my problem. I don't know. We're going to find out. What the heck is my problem? Okay. That's what I thought it was. It was too much. And I'm going to go back and add some blue in here, like right here in the middle. And like I said, there's no right or wrong. You just keep playing around until you get what you like. And I'll tell you another way to smear is take a wet baby wipe. A wet baby wipe or a wet paper towel always smears. So let's just, I want to smear this a little bit more. Perfect. I'm not smearing that. Perfect. Is that a, a term, smearing? Hopefully I'm still on frame. Okay, so you saw what I did there. So now look, I love it. Love it. You might want to add a little more. I might add a little light purple in here. Yeah, I think not. We'll just add the blue back in there. Love it. Okay. I know I've said I love it a million times and then I go through and I do some more to it. That's just part of the process. Okay. Also, see over here um, on, this, on this side that we don't add anything. I'm going to add a little bit of blue to this side to go over this watch a little bit because the watch looks like now like it's just um, like it's just floating in the sky, which is I like that look. Um, but on this side, it's not floating, right? So let's just add some of this blue over here so we can blend it into this watch okay blend it over the watch and let's use a paper towel or a baby wet so that we can smear it a little bit And so we can smear it into the rest of everything also. Very nice. Um, I went down a little far, so I'm going to use this deeper purple. So that, just to add a little dimension. And let's see if we can... Add that in here. Yes. I love that. And we'll add a little more purple right here. Just kind of smear that in a little bit. Okay, just a little bit. I love it and it's now it's gone over this watch this um this uh watch now the watch looks like it's like a part of the sky not like it's just pasted in the sky like it looked before okay so now what we need to do and i might have to rearrange my camera is we need to go down to the bottom we're gonna go straight to the bottom and start working on the water down here okay so let me bring this down let me see if i'm in frame for the water okay I'm gonna have to move you guys for a second, so if things get crazy, bear with me. All right, now you guys can see the water. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna apply apply everything the same way I just did it, but I'll show you how we're gonna change water to make it different than clouds, okay? That's up, through, up in the sky. Um, you'll see. 
Anyway, let's start. Um, we'll start with some blue. Okay, and we'll smear that. You guys like how I made that word up? Schmearing. Um, also, we can, like I said, we can schmear with a baby wipe if we want to make it spread a little bit more, make it a little bit more see-through, which I do. I'm going to, because these are stones that are in the water, so I don't mind some of those stones showing. All right, let's add a couple more colors, of course, in here. We're going to add that purple in here. And I'm putting the purple, I'm putting all the colors on kind of heavy because I need enough paint to make it smear into the rest of it, smear across. And if the, if the paints have a little bit of opaqueness, you don't usually have to use a baby wipe. Like this purple has a little bit of an opaqueness. Um, the word opaque. I'm trying to think of the word opaque is the one I'm looking for. You can, it's translucent. It has a little bit of trans, not opaque. It has translucency. You can kind of see through it. It's not as solid as that blue is. So I'm not going to add a baby wipe with this one. And that's another thing. You'll learn your, you'll learn your, your paints and your mediums as you're working with them and to know what they do and what they don't do. And you'll know what to do. You know that saying just trust and believe there you go <laughs> trust and believe let me get a few more baby wipes out because this is something where I use baby wipes to clean my hand and I use baby wipes as a tool So let's keep going. Let me make sure also that you guys are in frame and you're seeing what I'm doing. Okay. And we'll work the other side in a minute. We're just working this side right now. Um, what am I doing now? Let's add, um, <clears throat> let's add some, um, magenta pink color to this water okay. and we're going to use our finger again and kind of go up into that purple and it's going to create other colors too which is really magical but make sure you go up into that purple ahead of it and go right over and the cake stand part that's perfect that it's underneath the water if it shows up through the paint that'll be beautiful too okay I want a little bit more blending so I'm going to use a wet baby wipe here just to get the paint to blend and smear a little more perfect I'm going to add a little bit more of the blue I'm going to end it with the blue. And I'm definitely going to use a baby wipe to smear this out. Because it's super, this paint's really, the word, opaque. <laughs> and it's very um, thick. So take my baby wipe and let's smear. And that was enough to paint the smear all the way or over. And maybe up a little bit too. And make sure the smear is right into that pink. There we go. That's gorgeous. That blue is phenomenal. 
I love that blue color. You guys, I'm going to take off my ring because I'm afraid my rings are going to get, my ring is going to get a paint on it. Okay, so let's go over to this other side. Let me make sure I'm lined up with the camera to go to the other side over here. Let's go down here. And when you do the same thing to the other side, we'll start out with this blue. Like I said, you can apply all of this with your, um, with your finger. Um, I just can't get into my little palette over here with my finger because um, of my nails. So. Oh, I'm loving a little bit of this. This is going to be a waterfall. A little bit of that, the bottom of it is underwater. It's gorgeous. This blue color is just absolutely, I've never used this blue color for my, um, for my blue, for my sky or water before. It is gorgeous. I'm so glad that I am using it. Okay, so let's go into some purple. It's a deeper purple color here again and start smearing some of that in. Okay. That looks good. Oh, this could blend and smear a little more. There we go. And then um, let's add some pink. I know blit, I know smearing is not a word, but in my vocabulary it is. We're gonna add a little bit more pink in through here. And I wanna add a little bit more purple down into here. Go for the pink. Ooh, I just used a different shade of pink in, uh, pink in there, but you know what? I'm glad I did. I like it. Nice. And then let's go with some more of that beautiful blue that I'm loving. I'm going to put some more of that beautiful blue into here. And we'll maybe go to our baby wipe. So all of this is about feeling your way through it. There's no right, complete right or wrong answer. You just kind of feel your way through. And I'm loving that light. I forgot about this light pink color I have over here. Um, I need to add some of that into here. Isn't that gorgeous, that light pink? Yeah, let me see if I can let me get some paint off my fingers so I can... blend that in. Gorgeous. Love that light pink in there. Need to blend it in a little bit more, so let's do that. Perfect. Very nice. Love it. Now let me show you how we're going to turn that into, um, we'll work with the water down here. Let me show you how we're going to turn that into water. Okay. That looks like water or it looks like a sky. Either way. But this is how we're going to differ, diff, differentiate. What's the word I'm trying to say? This is the way we're going to... Um, differentiate, I can't say the word, from the sky, from the water. So I'm going to show you right now. And it better be my husband. Yes, it is. Okay. All right. So we're going to take some white, cheapy acrylic paint, apple barrel. I like to buy my white <coughs> in the big thing like this because I use a lot of white. 
So just a second, of course, it's clogged. So if you think you can't do this, this you can. You can use your fingers, right? You can all finger paint. And a lot of this is finger painting. All right. What I have here is I have a brush that's very uh, stiff. So you want a stiff brush like this. This can make clouds. This can make water. This can make um, puffy clouds. It can make kind of like more jagged clouds. Like I said, it can make uh, like little waves in the water. So we're going to make waves in the water. Hopefully this brush works. The one I really like to use, I can't find right now for some reason. Anyway, so what, let's go ahead and start putting waves in the water. Yeah, this is going to work perfect. And we're going to put waves in the water here. Look how gorgeous that is. Doesn't that just automatically make this start looking like water? Yeah. It's like all of a sudden we have water. And make sure you do when you do that that you do it very roughly. You don't want it to look even at all. Um, yeah, I think that looks awesome. Okay, we'll get the one on a little bit of light it's there. All right, another way to make this look like water is um, is to take. A, um, this is a liner brush okay these beautiful brushes here I get at Hobby Lobby um, they're in not in the fine art section then the section where you'll find the craft paint and you can buy a pack of like 10 or 8 or 10 brushes for like 8 to 10 dollars you can buy a pack of four for like five or six something like that so that's where I got this um, but I think they have a whole pack of nothing but fine liner brushes and I love a fine liner brush okay you're going to see me use this a lot. So I'm going to take my white paint. Oh, you know what? I meant to do, um, okay. We're going to do splashes. Like we're going to do splashes like this. We'll just do them right now. I really want to do the splashes after I do the painting on the things here. Like after I paint all this other stuff in, but for the sake of just showing you what the heck I'm talking about, take your stiff brush again. Okay, with not a whole lot of paint on the brush, you're just going to take it and you're just going to go like this and just flick up. And then do another flick. And that just starts creating, starts creating like, um, like the, you know, the water's rough and it's just splashing. Okay. And kind of the more uneven that you do it, like I'm going to do both while I'm going that way. Like this. And like that. Now for these waves, okay, I don't like how that wave looks, so I'm going to erase it. For these waves, I do prefer... Okay. Let's see if I can do this without interrupting. I do prefer my other brush... It's just like this stiff brush here, but it's a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna just give myself two seconds just to look for it again. I don't know why I can't find it. Oh, is this it? Oh, here it is. This is it. Yeah, I found it. I was looking for it before the video started and I couldn't find the damn thing. So again, this is another one of those stiff brushes, but it's just a little bit smaller. That's why I like it. I have a little bit more control with my waves. They're not so fat. Like that was just way too fat. Okay. Okay. And so I'm going to create some more of these type of waves once I paint these things. So I don't want to create any more waves right now. But I wanted to show you so you got an idea of how those waves are, are created. Okay. And then... I want to um, make like little splash, like little splashes in the water. I'm really just coming up with the most technical terms. So it's just three little lines that just go up like this. 
Let me just make sure you guys are seeing that. I might need to come in closer. You guys are seeing it. Let me just come down a little bit. And let me just bring myself up, my paper back a little bit more. Oh Lord, I'm about to crash my camera. All right, I'll try to stay up here and I'll show you guys. And I might, I might go out of frame for just a second, but I'll be back up. So anyway, you're just making these little, little splash. One, two, three. And don't try to be perfect about them. Just put them in and however they land is how they land. Okay. Now I'm going down below where the camera's at. I'm just doing the same thing. I wish I could, you guys could see me at the bottom, but you guys, my camera almost crashed. So I think my, what the problem is, is my table is not even. There's places that if I, my easel feels like it's going to fall any second. All right. So you see these, these, uh, little, these little mini splashes. So we have the big splashes and then we have the mini splashes that we've created, right? In the water. You could do one, two, three up, or you can just do two, just like boom, boom. That could look good too. Okay. All right. So now that, now we just created water, right? A little, let me see what you guys are seeing. Fabulous, huh? Okay. So, and the other thing we're going to do at the end is I would take, um, no, I'll do it right now because I think it will look, make it look really magical. Let's take a little bit of, um, and splatter a little bit of, um, white splatters. That'll look fabulous. Okay. In the water. I just think it, it's like, I always add white splatters almost on everything. I just think it adds a mystical, magical effect. And I love it. So I'm glad I just added it right now. Okay. So look how beautiful that looks. Gorgeous. All right. So my camera's going to go crazy for a second. I'm going to bring myself back down. We're going to go back up to the sky. Okay. And then we'll work all of this stuff here in a little bit. But let's go to the sky. And we can throw in a few clouds with that, my favorite brush, my favorite stiff brush. This one. Okay. And you see how small it is like that? It's not super small, but that's how small. Something you want to look for if you're going to do this type of work. So I'm going to take that same brush and now I'm going to make, um, do some clouds out of it. Okay. So we can do some, um, some clouds just going like this. Cool, huh? And because it's a stiff brush, and because it's a stiff brush, it just gives you that rough look with clouds. Okay. So we'll throw in a few more right here. I like a little one there and we'll throw in a little here and we'll throw in a little here and that's it. Maybe we'll throw in a little here and you can just throw the clouds in just like this, just kind of like that and not do it like true, just kind of just throw in little, little areas like this, just straight across. And because it's a rough brush, it'll give you that cool cloud look and look how easy we just did those clouds you guys we didn't take any time bam wham bam thank you officer okay <laughs> okay that's from a movie that, I, that martin that martin was in oh what's martin's last name oh, i can't think of his name anyway it's from a movie okay um Now I want to throw some lightning in. I think that could look really, really cool. And I may throw in some more lightning after we get this stuff painted. Well, we'll see. Anyway, let's throw some lightning in. 
again, you take your, um, your liner brush again, go into your white paint. Let me see how this paint is doing. You may need to water it down a little bit. You may not. So let me just see, but you're going, you want to take and do a squiggle. So this is how you make lightning. Okay. Just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle your brush. And then I like to have it break out. I like to have it break out like. And I had it going right over this, which is going to be a waterfall, right? And then let's do some more lightning. Let's have some more lightning coming from this side. And you can didn't you don't have to go so wiggly you can go like this on this side of it so this side was all wiggle 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 and this side was more longer because it's lightning um there is no perfect no rhyme or reason with lightning and i've studied lightning a lot and um and I've studied lightning a lot, just in magazines, whenever, or a picture of lightning, I'm like, I look at it and I'm like, you know what? The more uneven that you make your lightning, the better. Like right there, I almost messed up, right? But I like how that looks. So the more kind of crazy you get with your lightning, the better, the more it looks. I didn't like that lightning right there. So we'll get rid of that. So that's how you can create some lightning and your lines can be thick and your lines can be thin. So also change the variations of your brush. You can push down a little bit, make it a little bit thicker, a little thinner. I'm going to see if I want to have a little, yeah, I want the lightning to kind of come off of there that way. And let's see if we want it to come off the other side. Cool. Lightning's crazy. It, lightning goes all kinds of ways, too. So start looking at lightning when you see it on TV, um, in books, in magazines, pictures of lightning, and you can start, I don't know, just getting different ideas of how to do lightning. So, okay. Cool, huh? Oh, I'm loving it. Okay. I want to throw in some um, stars some shooting stars. I like it to get really crazy in the in the sky. So let's do um let's do did I just put my brush away? Where did I, where's my brush? Okay. Oh, um okay, so first of all we need to make little stars. So we do the same the way we just made um the splatters in the water is how we're gonna make our small stars. So I like to make three different sizes of stars. And that gives you a really nice look. So let's now just do white spotters, which is going to represent the small stars, right? And when we're done, I will, I will have these white spotters all over this whole picture because I just think, like I said, it adds magic. Look how magical the sky looks now with those stars. That's what I just did. Okay, so next we're going to have to come in closer because we see how close we can come that you, we can still get everything in. I'm going to work kind of small. Let me bring this over. Okay, that should be good. Okay. So, the first thing I want to do is I made the small stars. Now we're going to make the medium sized stars. So, what I like to do is with my liner brush, we're still working with the liner brush. We're back to the liner brush because I was just working with my other one. Um, you go to the little small dots and you just do little flicks like. One, two, three, four, five. I like to do five little flicks and it makes these little medium stars and you don't want the stars to look perfect. So you don't need your flicks to be perfect. In fact, the more imperfect they are, the better. I like to just find a dot, all those little dots we made, all those splatters and just make a star out of one of them. So flick at one, two, three, four, five. And sometimes you can do three or four. You don't always have to do five. 
okay? You can even just make your own dot, put a dot there and then just start. If you wanna put something somewhere and you don't see a dot there. Okay, I just did uh, four right there. Let's go over here. Okay. So you can do three, you can do four, you can do five flicks. In fact, I encourage you to um, change it up because that'll just help you. And I do like to flick, I like to put the dot down, either put the dot down or use a dot that's there and flick up because when you flick up, it gives you less control and they look the stars look more real okay so that's probably all the stars I want to do now I want to do some shooting stars so again either put the dot there or use a dot that's already there like right here there's a dot here I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger okay and again I'm gonna shoot out okay Now look how cool that looks. It looks like, and it fades out, so you don't even, it looks like it's coming in, right? And also, it gives you less control, so it makes it look like a real shooting star. It makes it look like, so it's not, like you didn't just put that shooting star there. It just looks more real. I know, realness when we're doing like a total fairy world, but, okay, there's, I put a dot there, and yeah, flick out, perfect. Now, I like them to go both ways and go like that, but then I have to move my paper from underneath this camera and I can't, it's hard for me unless I move my paper to be at the right angle so for right now all my shooting stars are going to go out this way but I will off camera when I can I'll go ahead and um, have some going the other way um, also you can take some of those shooting stars and put them on this castle I'm gonna try to do it and go from the angle I hate going from. Okay, it worked. Okay. Actually, I don't think I like those the way they turned out. I didn't like how I don't like how this one turned out. So we'll leave that, take that one away. That one I'll leave. It's okay. It's not my best, but it's good enough. Okay, let's do another shooting star over here. Perfect. Um, shooting stars and different stars as we go along. I may have a couple, I will have more shooting stars on coming off of different things. Like maybe off of these once I turn them into, um, let me see if you guys are seeing what I'm seeing. Okay, let me bring that up. I probably will have more shooting stars or even smaller stars. Um, a little bit of them here and there on the castle and on the water features but I need to paint those right paint those so for now they're good let's put a shooting star on this mountain okay. cool very cool and the reason I like them to put I like to put shooting stars on the mountain like going over the mountain and into the sky because it brings everything in together like the shooting star that's on this castle looks awesome because it brings the castle into the sky so everything's just meshed together we'll do more shooting stars on the sky after we um make a put a water make a waterfall on there all right let me see what the time situation is on this on this Are we at 40 minutes? Okay. Are we at 40? Yeah, 40, 46 minutes. So we've got about another 15, 20 minutes for this. We're going to, I'm going to do this in parts because it takes a little time. There's a lot of moving steps to this. And if you want to follow along and do something like this, then um, it'll give you a chance to take the things I've shown you so far and do them. So, all right. So next, let's go to... Next, let's go to this um, castle. And this castle, we're going to have water all over the castle. Water or we're going to have snow. So it can be snow or water. They kind of look the same, okay? So you can imagine what you want, snow or water coming. Well, you kind of have to make a decision in a way because the water is going to be 
if it's snow, it's going to be a lot thicker coming off. If it's water, it's going to be a lot thinner. So I need to make a decision of what I want to do. Let's do snow because we're going to do water. We're going to make wa uh, water features or waterfalls out of the cakes. So let's do um, snow on, on the uh, castle. Don't you like how I'm <laughs> making up my own rules with the little fantasy world? Oh, I didn't even say, <clears throat> I'm going to do this whole fantasy world, this little fairy world or mermaid world. That's what I like to call them. And then we're going to, I'm going to draw a, um, a woman, a mermaid, or no, I'm going to draw a fairy and, um, we'll paint her up together also. And then I will put her into this world. So that'll be the final. And I've done a lot of these, you guys. Um, I've sold some of them. I put some of, I made prints of some of these and put them on um, composition notebooks and made them into journals. And I sell them on my Etsy shop. You can go to my Etsy shop. There's a link below and you can see that. Um, I've sold prints of this in my Etsy shop and actually at a restaurant one time when I kind of had like a little show there for a couple weeks. Um, so anyway, let's get started. So when you're going to do snow, I like to put a little uneven line in. And as you go down, make it thinner. Okay? And how I, I do water the same way, but I make it a little bit thinner. I don't make it as thick as this is. Also, so and I also still, no matter it's snow or it's water, as you as it drizzles down because of gravity, make it get thinner. So I'm bringing that across. Okay. So I always like to lay the snow in, right? And then start my and start my drizzling. So this what I what I'm doing is I'm just having this castle just dripping in snow. Oh, the other thing I like to do, I don't like how that turned out. Just a second. Get, oh, let me get rid of that. Okay. Um, the other thing is, is when you have the drifts of snow or water, um, make sure that they're not the same. Like, stop the drip. Like, this dripping is going all the way into this cake, right? I stopped this one right here. So just make sure your drips are uneven, that you don't have any drips the same. Because you're trying to create... Even though it's a fantasy world, you're still creating nature. You're never going to have your drips of snow be the same, right? Okay. So that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so let's, let's lay in some snow here. Got to have snow here and here and down here. And when I lay the snow in, I, cut, I do it very unevenly. Because, again, I want it to look like snow. So don't, what I'm saying is when, you, when you're following the, the roof of the line, don't just have it straight. Just lay it in like this, kind of jaggedly, naturally. I just had to check and make sure that you guys are, make sure that you're seeing this. And when it comes to the water features, what I'm going to do next, what are these cakes? I'm going to do one of them. Um, off camera and we'll do the other one on camera together for the sake of time and it's the same it's the same you know it's the same technique so and in between I like to do it like maybe like it's a real little small one that just drizzles a little bit like a little 
a little iceberg there. Let's see what we're gonna do here. I'll put that right into this world down here, okay? See how this looks going up into here like that? That looks good. Okay, so we can keep coming in here and just working the snow. Like right into here, we have this other little ledge right here, which I just laid in some snow went across all jagged like I told you and then let's throw some snow in here okay and then we'll bring this down a little bit more And then let's bring some of this here and we'll just have this just end it like right there. Might bring a little bit right here. It's just a little bit. I'm just looking to see other little opportunities for like right here, here's another little ledge. So I just find like little ledges or windows and I put it in the snow. Sorry if I get quiet, you guys. I'm just focusing. Laying in some snow there. And just bring this down a little bit. Okay. And then let me see if I want to add a little bit more anywhere else. There's a little area right here. We could add a little bit right above the door. I want you to still see that it's a door. So I'm going to not go really far into the... I don't want to go like that. Okay. Because I still want you to see that there's a door there. The door to the castle. Yeah, and I think I like that. There's a little part here at the top of this castle that we could, and a little bit here, where we could do a little bit of snow drifting down. Very fine. There we go. Just a little bit. And I love the way this is looking. I don't know if I want to put any more or not. And we can always go back if, and see if we want to add a little more or not. But right now, I think that this is what I like. And let me look at the time situation. Yeah, right. Just almost an hour right now. So we'll make this into probably a, um, into three parts. So the next part will be, I will show you how, let me just make sure that you can see the bottom half of this. Okay. Um, <clears throat> 
this will be part one. On part two, I will have one of these cakes done and made into a waterfall, and then I'll show you how to make this other cake into a waterfall, okay? So one will be done. Um, how I made this into, a, how I make one of these two into a waterfall is the same is the same technique I use on making this into a waterfall. So I might do that off camera also. And then here, this is a perfume bottle, remember, upside down? You can't even tell anymore now that it's a perfume bottle upside down. And I'm going to make a little world in here, okay? We're going to put little people going across here. Um, I'll probably put little people going in here, so I'll show you how to do people. Um, we'll probably throw in some birds here um, inside of there. Um, I might throw in some little moons, things like that. Um, another thing I'd like to do, like in the sky, a lot of times I like to put little planets. Um, my sky is already busy with all the stuff I did, so I'll show you how to make planets and all that in another video. Um, so we won't be doing planets today, but I love doing little planets or bubbles too. Bubbles are really fun. So there's a million little things you can do. You can throw wind in here too. Um, and since I already threw in lightning and, uh, stars of all sizes, <laughs> And shooting stars, we're good. And I did clouds. Those are just, just a lot of stuff I've already done. So that's where we're at. Um, so look forward to part two in the next day or two. And we'll be working on the waterfall. And we'll be working on making this perfume bottle into its own little world within this world. And this will be done. This set of rings, stack of rings will be done and made into a waterfall feature. And one of these cakes will be a water feature. So that's it. All right, you guys, um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd love for you to do so. If you can give this video a thumbs up, any comments or questions, leave them below. Come visit me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I have a little uh, link down below if you want to click it. It's called um, Buy Me a Cup of Coffee. And it's just a little offering. If you um, want to make a little offering to the channel, you can. And you can do it through Buy Me a Cup of Coffee. Um, and that is it. Oh, and like I always say, the most important thing, do something special for someone today. And remember, my friends, we have more in common than we do not. Okay? All right. I will talk to you guys in the next video. Look forward to part two. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.